Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu confirmed yesterday that the shipment of S-300 air defense systems to Syria has been completed. Reporting to President Putin, Shoigu said the work was finished a day ago, and Syrian officials say that now Israel will have to think twice before striking. According to Shoigu, the delivery of the S-300 complexes includes 49 pieces of equipment, illuminating laser radio locators, defense priority systems, control vehicles, and four missile launchers. Further, by the end of October, Russia hopes to have a fully operational and unified control system for air defense in Syria. On the other side, however, the United States and Israel have warned against this delivery. The United States State Department said Tuesday that the sale of S-300s to Syria would be a serious escalation, and Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu described the move last week as putting advanced weapons systems into irresponsible hands, leading to increased dangers in the region. That being said, the sale is unlikely to stem Israeli operations in Syria. Israel has clarified to Moscow that it will continue to operate in Syria as it sees fit to defend Israeli sovereignty, and the United States has vocalized its full support for such actions as well. And last week, an Israeli official said that while the S-300 anti-aircraft missiles posed a unique challenge, it will be dealt with, quote, in different ways, not necessarily by preventing the delivery, end quote. Israel's Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman similarly stated that the IDF wouldn't shy away from simply destroying the S-300 systems upon their installment. Regardless, what remains in the region is the feeling of a powder keg after regional tensions were further stoked by the downing of a Russian aircraft last month. Syrian forces shot down a Russian reconnaissance plane by accident, killing all 15 members on board while allegedly trying to return fire against an Israeli airstrike. Russia blames Israel for misrepresenting and underreporting their operations in Syria, while Israel claims to be fully cooperating with Russia as per agreements. Following Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu's insistence that the International Atomic Energy Agency needs to investigate new and secret atomic sites in Iran, IAEA head Yukia Amano has fired back, saying the agency doesn't take evidence at face value. Netanyahu first made his claims last week at the United Nations General Assembly and has since reiterated that the UN must inspect the atomic warehouses immediately, quote, before the Iranians finish clearing it out, end quote. But in a statement in response to Netanyahu's accusations, Amano said, quote, the agency sends inspectors to sites and locations only when needed. The agency uses all safeguards relevant to information available to it, but it does not take any information at face value. All information obtained, including from third parties, is subject to rigorous review and assessed together with other available information to arrive at an independent assessment based on the agency's own expertise, end quote. But Netanyahu isn't satisfied, releasing a statement of his own from the Prime Minister's office, suggesting that if inspectors with Geiger counters were sent immediately, the Prime Minister's words will be proven true. German Chancellor Angela Merkel is set to land in Israel today, accompanied by leading German business people, for two days of meetings with Prime Minister Netanyahu and other top Israeli officials. The meetings will focus on economy, innovation, and technology, and indeed Chancellor Merkel has previously cited Israel as, quote, one of the world market leaders in information technology and cybersecurity. She continued that we can learn a lot in many areas. Merkel also stressed the unique relationship between Germany and Israel on her podcast, saying that Germans have a special responsibility for the relationship and that they are very thankful for the close partnership and friendship with Israel. Aside from the economic business, though, Merkel will also go to the Yad Vashem Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem for the third time and receive her third honorary doctorate from an Israeli university. But while this visit highlights Israel and Germany's historically close partnership, it also exposes deep policy disagreements between the two regarding geopolitical issues and the Israel-Palestinian conflict. Currently, specifically, the demolition of Khan al-Akhmar and the conflict over the Iran nuclear deal. Netanyahu and Merkel have deep disagreements on all of these issues, particularly with Khan al khmau where Israel says that the village was illegally built. Israel also offered to resettle residents a few miles away, but Palestinians and other critics say demolition is aimed at displacing Palestinians for settlement expansion. And on Tuesday, students at Khan al khmau held posters of Merkel pleading for her to pressure Israel to halt the approved demolition plan. Merkel is not expected to enter Palestinian territories during this itinerary. But still, Germany and several other European countries have already expressed their criticisms in destroying the village. And Khan al has certainly been placed on the docket for discussion. In other news, according to a recent survey, the majority of Jewish Israelis have a positive opinion about United States President Donald Trump. 82% of Jewish Israelis trust the way he handles global affairs, while 94% have a positive opinion of the U.S. in general. 
This number is a bit lower for non-Jewish Israelis, though, as just 69% reportedly have confidence in Trump's handling of international affairs, and 83% of non-Jewish Israelis have a favorable view of the U.S. Now, this high rating for the U.S. and its president is shared by the Philippines, yet the high opinion Israelis and Filipinos apparently feel towards the president is not shared in 25 other surveyed countries. The UK has just a 50% favorability rating for Trump in the US, Canada has 39%, France has 38 and Germany has just a 30% favorability for Trump in the US. And just a few countries showed a ratings improvement between 2017 and 2018, such as Spain, Japan, South Korea, Brazil, and South Africa. The poll also displayed the differences between voters on the right and voters on the left, with the largest discrepancy being in Israel. Voters on the right have a 94% favorability towards Trump, while only 57% on the left view him positively. Additionally, 52% of Israelis are also more convinced than other nations that the United States has been doing its fair share to address global issues over the past few years. This number drops significantly in European countries, though, dropping all the way to single digits. It's also worth noting, however, that Israelis also ranked higher on the question of whether the United States takes its interests into account, at 86% of Israelis believing that the U.S. does have Israel's best interest at heart. The median for all the countries was at just 28%. And finally, 79% of Israelis believe that ties between the U.S. and Israel have improved over the past two years. So whether you love Trump or hate him, at least the relationship between Israel and the U.S. seems to be as strong as ever. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.